demonstrates how to map a chromosome inversion. I put my blog uh, entry there. That's the entry page. Uh, this would, should be posted on University Genetics Dash. Uh, I think it's uh, mapping uh, or classical mapping. Anyway, go, go there and you can see the link. Um, so here's the data I'm going to give you. I give you a bunch of loci. I'm going to use capital letters here and I put an asterisk between F and E and that asterisk is going to represent the centromere. So you need to figure out what the normal chromosome looks like and it's going to have all the letters here in alphabetical order and I want to use lowercase so I can distinguish between the gene products here. So uh, the task that I'm giving you is to draw the pairing configuration at prophase 1 and then write out what happens after meiosis occurs. And then you should also indicate whether they're balanced or unbalanced, which you might recall balanced means they've got all the proper genes on the chromosome, so no gaining or losing them. Um, and even if it's inverted, it can still be balanced. This, for example, is a balanced chromosome. And unbalanced would be if it's gained or lost any loci. So I'll pause for this and let you uh, practice it yourself. The, the, this worksheet can be downloaded um, from my blog. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got uh, the wild type version that I put in here with the loci appropriately indicated. And I want you to notice that we have a region here where all the loci line up. We also have a region over here where they also line up, even if it's inverted. And this is the point of the inversion. The reason it's a good idea to identify these is <clears throat> when you draw out your chromosome for the uh, pairing configuration, uh, you need to put a big loop. And this flat region right here is going to correspond with these. And this flat region here is going to correspond with these. And this is where the inversion is. So let's put in those letters. And we put them in alphabetically here, which indicates the proper order of the genes in the normal one. By convention, I typically put this up here, but you could use the inverted chromosome if you wanted to. It's not any um, less correct. Here's the sister chromatid because we're in prophase one and the uh, chromosomes have replicated. And there's the inverted chromosome. And I'll write the loci in like this. Notice that we're matching them up. We've got uh, the uninverted areas with K lining up with K and L with L. And J here in the inversion loop, we see them all lining up just right. We need to replicate this. So there we go. And let's put in a nice centromere, same location. So everything lines up where it should. And this twist here is the trick. Now I want to figure out, oh, I've got to figure out where the crossover occurs. So let's uh, put a cross between F and G. And here's where that cross would be. I've got this crossover. It's not beautifully drawn here, but it is between F and G. And if I'm following this chromosome around here, I'll, lead, I'll take up locus little f and then go over here and pick up locus big G. So let's do the easy answers first. Uh, we want to figure out uh, where this wild type normal cr uh, chromatid, uh, what, what it'll look like. And there's no crossover involved, so I can just write this thing out just like this. And there's part of the answer immediately. There's also another easy one if we just take a look at the inverted chromosome. And here I've highlighted it in yellow. And by the way, using this on an exam is not a bad idea. It lets you keep track of what DNA you've used. If you're not allowed to use a highlighter or you forgot the highlighter, you could somehow mark it up by just you know scribbling on each of the, the chromosomes just so you know what you've used and haven't used. Okay, so let's follow this over. We'll draw a line over here and we're going to follow loci A, B, C, D, J, I, H and you can see it would correspond with this one up here. So when you write this out it's quite simple and it's going to look just like this one. Now the hard work comes with the crossover so I'm going to highlight through the crossover. I'll start here. I know that's not how the animation worked but go over here up through the centromere, follow the crossover, and then follow that arm all the way around, and just write out the genes in the proper order. Little a, little b, little c, little d, little e, centromere, little f, then capital G, H, I, J, D, C, B, A. And when you write that out like this, you'll see that that corresponds with the order that we have over here. Now, we have to write out the other chromosome. So using a highlighter, you can see that all the chromosomes accounted for because it's all colored. And we could start here with little m, little l, little k, or big M, big L, big K. It doesn't really matter. When you write them out, you will pick up all the other loci. So M, L, K, E, centromere, big F there, and then cross over. You can see there. And then G, H, I, J, K, L, M. Just like that. So we're almost done. We've got the 
configuration in Pro Phase 1, we've got the meiotic products that will occur, and now we have to say if they're balanced or not. And so if you look here and here, all of the genes are present, and so they are balanced. I shouldn't use a highlighter to write that out, but there you go. And if we look at these other two here, these are the ones that have been formed through the crossover, they are unbalanced. And that's the way you would solve this kind of a question.